Steve, we saw some dislocations, and we talked about this last week, uh, between the net asset values of some of the corporate bond ETFs uh, and the prices of the ETFs diverging a bit, a discount uh, for the ETFs. I, I guess philosophically, where are we on this? What will the upshot of this be in the postmortem? We have the usual ETF haters out there saying, aha, you see, this is the problem. But for those of us who watch this, the problem wasn't the ETF pricing. The ETF pricing got it right. The problem was the way they price bonds or the fact that they don't price bonds and they don't trade. Is, is, can you see anything down the line of how this is going to, will, will this improve bond trading, move to electronic bond trading? What, what, what's the upshot? Give us just 20 seconds on this. We let you go. I mean, my hope, truthfully here, Bob, is that, you know, at some point this causes bond trading to have more transparency. The ETF is the reflection of the true price because the firms that are quoting it need that underlying price to really know how to price the bond and price all of the bonds in the basket. The problem with the funds is obviously they don't price every day and they're using some type of pricing service where they're questioning it. And the hope that this brings to is you will have more of a public market as we go forward. It was kind of the same thought after... 08 and 09 that the NYSE had considered doing, and I know they have some type of public exchange that's not used highly, but how do you really bring the bond market into the light and have it look closer to the equity market, I think could be the outcome long term. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, stocks went electronic 20 years ago. Uh, they, bonds have been protected by a still very active over-the-counter market, which has worked fine. But the world uh, is entering the 21st century, and I think it's time for the bond market to figure out figure out how to do that as well. Feel very, uh, very strongly about that.